Let's take a little trip uh, back a ways. You know, we're always talking about strong El Ninos. There's not that many of them, but uh, there've been some around. What did they do? Are they all alike? Are they different? Let's take a look. 1997, 1998, that green area in the middle there indicates it, it rained. It's probably above normal to a certain degree, really above normal down along the Gulf Coast and over to Florida and up the East Coast. And you see California was extremely wet. That's 1997, 1998. Then comes in 1982. Uh, let's see, looks like there was some rain, probably close to normal. The big rains were down, looks like Louisiana, Mississippi, and the Pacific Northwest, maybe Southern Florida. Oh, it looks a little wimpy here, 1972, 73. We see some real dryness, Southeastern Oklahoma. A little, bit, a little bit of rain and such going on uh, the rest of Oklahoma. Then we move 1965, 1966, El Nino. Southern Oklahoma dry, some rain around, but very dry, but very wet Gulf Coast, extremely dry. Now this is an El Nino. Remember, it's supposed to rain and snow and storm and go on in California, 1965, 1966, strong El Nino and a desert bone dry. Now 1957, 1958 El Nino, Oklahoma dry, see that kind of brownish tint there? We're dry. But you go back to Northern California, the Pacific Northwest, and the Northeast part of the country, very much on the wet side there. Then 1991, 1992, really wet in Texas. Somewhat wet in Oklahoma. Dry in Northern California. It's supposed to rain out there. Northern California, Washington, Oregon area. Then we move to the El Nino of 2009, 2010, and it's kind of a mix probably close to normal in Oklahoma. So what do we learn from looking at that? Well, what we really learn is that they, boy, all of these El Ninos are a little bit different. And the most striking things, you know, California, you expect, when we say El Nino, you expect heavy rains and flooding. That happens sometimes. Other times, as I mentioned, it's bone dry. So it's a fascinating business. We need a lot of help from a lot of smart people out there. So you need to study that. You know, El Nino sometimes means drought. <laughs> sometimes it means wet. You know, precipitation, storms and such, usually related to the position of a jet stream and available moisture. In a normal El Nino year, there's usually one jet stream to our north and another one over just south of Oklahoma. Now, a movement of the southern jet by a few hundred miles or so could shift us from a dry pattern into a wet pattern. So if this one should drop south, and they occasionally do, stay through the Gulf of Mexico, we're pretty dry. We stay dry. If this continues up here, this jet stream, that keeps the fronts pretty far north. So a shift could go, take us from a, from a wet pattern to a dry pattern very, very quickly.